little witchlings we're back with day three and well done for all of you for sticking this out with me i applaud your dedication i really do um <laughs> today one of the one of the main things that can reveal someone as a novice writer is when they've got problems with their point of view this could include choosing the wrong point of view for you switching point of view and tense during a story head hopping an overpowering first person narrator and inferring non point of view characters thoughts so that's the thing we're going to be focusing on today so here we go i'm going to keep this as brief as possible and i'm going to explore some of the points further in other videos but today i'm just going to give you the basics okay choosing the wrong point of view for you is a big thing for novice writers Many tend to use the first person point of view as they feel that it helps them tell the story better by living the story through the character as if they were living it themselves. This is fine for some stories, but it can be very limiting. Uh, one of the big rules of writing is to show, don't tell. And unfortunately, first person point of view makes it harder to stick with that. As the third person or seeing narrator, you can easily explain little bits of backstory or information that the reader might need. But with the first person, you're very limited to what the protagonist knows, what they can believably find out within the story, what they see and what they experience, and what people can tell them. So you're also stuck in one place at one time. So anything that happens like off camera needs to be explained or not seen at all. Again, that's very, very limiting. First person point of view can sometimes be overwhelming to a reader. You're literally in the head of the character. And if they end up annoying you, you cannot get away from them. This can lead to problems with whiny, self-centered characters. Another problem with first person point of view is that it doesn't give you much of a chance to develop your writer's voice. You'll be talking exclusively as your character. Other characters can become a bit of an issue too, because the reader will only ever get the protagonist's first person point of view of a character, not who or what the character really is. You know how it can be, right? You might not like someone, so you infer meaning to what they do and you assume what they are thinking, what they are feeling or why they are acting a certain way. We do this in life, but when we do it in books, it can lead to a very two-dimensional character that readers might find very, very hard to relate to or to even care about in any way. Another problem with first-person point of view is that it doesn't give you much of a chance to develop your writer's voice. You'll be talking exclusively as your character. Other characters can become a bit of an issue too, because the reader will only ever get the protagonist's first person point of view of a character, not who or what the character really is. You know how it can be, right? You might not like someone, so you infer meaning to what they do and you assume what they are thinking, what they are feeling or why they are acting a certain way. We do this in life, but when we do it in books, it can lead to a very two-dimensional character that readers might find very, very hard to relate to or to even care about in any way. A switching point of view or tense during a story is something that can often happen by accident while writing, and you must make a conscious effort to avoid it or at least attempt to catch everything during editing if you can't stop it while you're actually writing. Of course, switching point of view or tense might be something that you actually wish to do on purpose. This is perfectly possible to do, but it can be quite hard to do it well. General rules would be to only swap once in each chapter, so constant bouncing around, that can be really confusing. This is a problem in both first person and third person writing, and it's often referred to as head hopping. Head hopping can be incredibly confusing if done too often within a story or with no clear breaks or changes with it. It's easier to do when you're writing the third person point of view, but as first, I'd really recommend that you only change at the start of a chapter and maybe consider a subheading to explain who's narrating it and stick to them entirely for the entire chapter. I mean, I've read and enjoyed books that mix both the first and the third person Point of view and this is fine when it's done skillfully with clear defined character voices the only problem is when it's not one of my favorite authors Kate McAllister does this from time to time her books are predominantly in the first person in the form of the heroine of her books but now and then 
for a chapter or two, she might change to the third person and show the male love interest point of view. I find that because Katie's got a really, really, really distinctive writing style, it works quite well. But I've read a lot of others where it just does not. The key to it is clear divide between character voices and your author voice. So overpowering first person character voice can be a massive problem when choosing to write in the first person. This is often seen in young adult books. The problem with this is that usually the age of the main character will be somewhere around the teenage years or maybe the early 20s. We all remember those days. I mean, can't, don't we? We were in our teens and bloody hell were we annoying. We were moody, dramatic, over-emotional, careless, selfish, self-obsessed idiots. That, and we misunderstood almost everything. We took everything that was said to us the wrong way and we were basically pissed off at the entire world. I mean, that, that's pretty much being a teenager. Our hormones were all over the shop. We didn't know if we were going to make it through another class without destroying something or bursting into tears. And you want that to be the head that we're immersed in for an entire book or even an entire series. Wow. Things might get a little heavy and confusing then, right? We all know what it's like to listen to a teen telling a story or a bunch of them having a conversation. And honestly, it's exhausting and it's not always a pleasant experience. Trying to write that as an adult can be even harder. You can fall into the trap of creating an overpowering, over-emotional, annoying narrator that will put readers off, overshadowing everyone else in the book. When you have a story written from only one character's point of view and in the first person, you're in danger of them inferring other characters' thoughts and feelings. This is something that almost all readers and writers I spoke to for these videos gave me a warning about. You know how it can go. Okay, picture the scene. Boy Toy has a bad day. And because of that, he's just not in the mood to hang out. We've all been there. Nothing's been going right that day. You've got into six arguments before lunch and you want nothing more than to get home, flop on the sofa, eat pizza and watch crap TV. You don't want to have to be nice to anyone or to worry about saying the wrong thing. You just want some peace and quiet. So he texts his girlfriend, telling her that he's not feeling great and he's having an early night and he'll call her tomorrow. Which is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Everyone needs a break and a night off. But girlfriend doesn't think that. Oh no. Her brain is going mental, spinning like a hamster on a wheel and it's throwing up every single negative scenario that it can conjure up. He hates her. She's done something to annoy him, something to make him not want to see her. She doesn't know what this something is, so she must analyse everything she has said and done to him in the last week. Maybe longer, if she doesn't immediately find a possible reason for his behaviour. She wants to text and ask him if he's okay, but she's afraid what he might say. She's now thinking, he wants to break up. He's moving on with someone else right now. He's not home alone. He's not unwell. He's brought home that pretty new assistant from work. She's lost him. It's all her fault. All of that because she either didn't message back to us, she didn't wait for him to call her the next day, or wait to te text the next day and see how he is. She didn't trust him. She didn't listen. She panicked and she assumed. So much assuming. Inferring his thoughts, his feelings and his actions. Chaos. Yes. Do you really want that in your writing? It's not an episode of Jerry Springer. It's a story that your readers will be reading because they want to read a fictional story. Not about a massive drama filled thing. It's exhausting. This is not the way to show character emotions. This is not good to read. And if you're using it as a cheap and easy way to create conflict to move your plot along, then step right up right now and let me smack you upside the head because your readers deserve better than this overdone, over-emotional, dramatic, whining bullshit. Straight up. If you're going to go the first person route, do not let your characters assume how others are feeling or what they are thinking. There's no need for it. Let the characters act for themselves. They have a voice and actions of their own. If they don't, or you can't write it for them, then honestly, you're going to need to take some time to develop and practice your writing a little bit more. 
and sort out your writer's voice from your character's voice because you need that clear distinction. You have been warned. I mean, this is not me saying don't write first person if that's what you want to do. All I'm doing is making you aware of the pitfalls of writing in that point of view and I'm suggesting that you do some research on how to get the most out of that style of writing. Okay, that's all for today. Tomorrow I'm going to be covering common mistakes in narration, so please come back and check that out. Until then, blessed be and happy writing. Mm -hmm.